and we continually won't, 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 won't. God says that's idolatry. That's to have an idol. We need to trust in what God has given us. You know, and there's some other there's some other things that man worship today too. Hey, man, man worships himself. And we have hey, we have humanism. We have uh, communism. I mean, there's all kind of isms. Look, man thinks he has come to the point in his own knowledge. Look, man has become futile in his own thoughts right here. In verse 21 it says, Because they knew God. This is the reason man becomes futile. This is why, this is why he, he thinks he's got it all together. He thinks his mind and his wisdom is above God. And he thinks what he's thinking is the right thing. But the reason he, all this has happened is because he's refusing God who's been clearly shown to him in the beginning. And any time we take the knowledge of God and we refuse to uh, listen to the knowledge of God that He shows us, our mind becomes darkened. And we can't see. We don't have the light. And when our mind becomes darkened, we actually believe that we have the wisdom and the knowledge that, uh, of a right thing. And we think we've got it all together when in reality... We're, we're darkened in our own futile minds because we're not, look, we're not thankful. We, we're not thankful. That's what this verse says here. Because, look, man, God, because although they knew God, they did not glorify Him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their few, foolish hearts were darkened. So look, to turn your mind and to turn your ways from God Himself is to darken your mind and your heart. And it's evil. And it's unrighteous. And it's unholy. To take what God gives you and suppress it, to hold it down, to find other ways that cover up who He has clearly manifested Himself to be is not right. It is ungodly. And God will pour out His wrath for on mankind for suppressing the knowledge of who he is. Man does not, here's the problem, man does not glorify God. We'd rather take credit for ourselves. Look, you know, here's, here's the thing with man. Man wants to be God himself. If you take a dictator or you take somebody who has a, a large amount of power, hey, because there's no restraints on him, he, he's able to show truly who he is. He, he makes decisions on his own. That was, that was the thing with Nebuchadnezzar. Hey, that man had so much power. That king had so much power at that time in his kingdom that he thought, hey, I'm it. Hey, he could, he could have you killed if he wanted to. Hey, he, had, he could have you thrown into the fiery furnace for worshiping uh, somebody other than him. And he done those things. And, he, he, you know, and everybody followed him. People bowed down before him. And he thought, hey, I got it. Because look, look at all the power they had. But in reality, look, in reality, the more man is let go. Here's the thing, here's the thing about uh, God's wrath. And here's the thing about, look, the more that God lets you go in your own way, God restrains us. God's grace keeps us. God's grace hold us, holds us back from certain things. If He totally let us go today, and He totally let us do everything that we wanted to do in our fallen state, in, our, in who man is, hey, we would, be, we would end up just like Nebuchadnezzar. And it was only in God's grace where He humbled him and made him uh, run across the fields like a beast that he was able to see who he is. It's God's grace. It's God's grace that shows us who He is, even, in, even through His wrath. So we see God is, is, is true, true and holy and faithful in all of His doings. He's gracious and kind. I hope this made a little bit of sense. Uh, I'm not sure... How we're going to keep proceeding here? We should be out of this first chapter, uh, probably next week or the week after. I'm, I'm moving along a little bit faster, but you know it's very important that uh, that we don't move so fast that we lose sight of who God is revealing Himself to be. Uh, I guess that's all we got for this morning. I pray that uh, that God's word has been spoken, that that He has revealed Himself to you through His Word, and uh, even through my faults and failures, I pray that He's been revealed, that we can see who God is. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we bow our heads and we thank You for this morning. 
We thank you for your love and kindness. God, we thank you for revealing yourself to us. God, that we can see who you are. God, we, we're so thankful that, that uh, you let us see the light through your Son, Jesus Christ. You let us see our wickedness, Lord. You let us see our unholiness, Lord. You let us see how we uh, want to take glory to ourselves and not give it to you. God, is, and we're thankful, God, that you showed the most wrath that you showed in the New Testament, God, was showed on the cross at Calvary. When you poured your wrath on your Son, when you gave Him what I deserve, Lord, God, I'm thankful, Lord, for that gift, God. God, much has been given to me. Much has been given to all of us, Lord. So, God, I pray that you keep it upon our minds and hearts that so much has been given to us that we would continually, Lord, strive to give back, Lord. We can never repay, Lord, what you give for us. We can't work our way to heaven, Lord, but we know, God, that we want, we're indebted, Lord, to you. And we want to speak this love of your Son, Jesus Christ, and the forgiveness of his sin uh, to others, Lord, that they may also turn from the wrath that is to come and to trust in your forgiveness that is in Jesus Christ. Thank you again for your word. Thank you, Lord, for your kindness on us. These things we pray and ask in your name. Amen.